Are you ready to just leave the rat race for a perhaps more peaceful place? Ever considered leaving home for a faraway adventure? Well, Mark Cohen didn't just think about it, he did it. He left America for New Zealand. Oklahoma traveler Scott Thompson and photographer Grant Gerondale caught up with him along the center bush in their trek across New Zealand. New Zealand is a wonderfully tranquil place, a land without mega malls and fast food and out of control asphalt. It's a place of two lane roads and picket fences dripping with roses. It offers the kind of life Mark Cohen always imagined himself living back in New York. I, let it, I used to fish well, probably since I was five or so and used to skip school and disappear all the time and go fishing. And that was before Wall Street trapped Mark in a 35th floor office, before responsibility asked its penance of 80-hour work weeks, before keeping up with the Joneses kept Mark from cracking open his beloved box of fishing flies. On a day like this, the hotter it gets, you'll start to hear the cicadas, these crickets chirping. And with a, with a nice breeze like this, we may be able to get them to rise to dry flies, which is just about any fly angler's preference. That's what Mark does for a living now, fishing guide. After having met and married a New Zealand woman in the States, the two came this way to settle down. And suddenly, Mark's office was the Ariti River. The only appointments to be kept are those with six-pound trout. Bring your chainsaw. We spent a morning with Mark and his Kiwi partner, Wayne Perniski. Tramping through the ferocious gorse bush with its piercing needles is the price we pay to see this crystal clear Ariti. Mark Cohen has arrived at the office. I couldn't believe how open it was here and how few people there were. I just felt in Manhattan, living there and working there, there were too many people in too small a place. So this is the main body of the Ariti. What we'll do is we'll walk down there and start to fish our way up. You think I should be on the other side? I mean of the Ariti. That's the kind of tough decision Mark has to make these days. Which side of the river to stand on, which fly might tempt a hungry trout. You see how he's moving quite rapidly now. He's feeding actively. He's taking nymphs. That's good. Ah! Nicked him. Didn't get the hook in. But there's always another coming along. And if Mark doesn't snag it, maybe Wayne will. Wayne, what is he, about five, five and a half? Oh, I'm gonna have to cut him off. There's no clock out here, no quotas to meet. No phones going, no hassles, just getting away from it all. And if you catch a fish well, as I said, it's a bonus. So. You could you walk to any farmhouse here and knock on the door and say, I'm really thirsty, would you mind making me a cup of tea? And it wouldn't be, wouldn't be a problem. Now Mark's the first to admit moving to New Zealand was a gamble, but his fishing business is on its feet now. And the Kiwis have always made him feel welcome. They've got the best of the wry English sense of humor with, this, with the, an American old Wild West mentality. Mark still thinks of home, welcomes American news, and an occasional sitcom over the satellite. And my family is there, and I love my family a lot, and I hope more of them come to visit, but this is home. And this is Mark Cohen's dream come true. Excellent condition, maybe six and a half on a good day. On the Ariti River near Center Bush, New Zealand, Scott Thompson, the Oklahoma Traveler. And the Oklahoma Traveler also found some quirky kiwis. Tomorrow night at 10, we'll meet the Fluties in their house of seashells, as well as the Clapham Clock Museum, where no one's quite sure what time it is. That fisherman had some excellent technique. He did. You know, good for him. That's a fantasy we all have. One we time should, or we another. could go visit. Let's just give him a call. Give it a try.